Minerals Why can't Mongolia export its rare earths? Why is U.S.-Mongolia cooperation difficult to succeed? I'm Lao Lu. Recently, Outer Mongolia has been extremely active, causing quite a stir in the global rare earth market. This landlocked country is eager to transport its substantial rare earth reserves to the United States, launching frequent initiatives, they might as well write I want to strike a big rare earth deal with the US on their foreheads. To open this transportation channel, they've racked their brains, from early attempts to negotiate railway transit agreements with neighboring countries to the whimsical proposal of an air transport plan. But it's obvious to anyone that air freighting rare earths is impractical, the transportation volume is pitifully small, and costs are exorbitant. Industry calculations show that air transport costs are at least 20 times higher than sea transport for the same scale of rare earth shipments, it's like losing money to make a show, completely unfeasible. Why is Mongolia still so persistent? Behind this lies both the push of geopolitics and the game of economic interests. The global rare earth supply chain has long been dominated by China and the US. While Mongolia holds the world's third largest rare earth reserves, it has struggled to convert this into an economic advantage. Now, the US has extended an olive branch of cooperation, which seems like an opportunity to open markets but actually hides a trap of resource plunder. This is the inside story I'll unveil today. Mongolia's rare earth ambitions and real-world dilemmas, surrounded by China and Russia, Mongolia is like a rare earth treasure trove sealed in the heart of the continent. According to data from the US Geological Survey, its rare earth reserves reach 31 million tons, accounting for 20% of the global total, another source says 16.77%, firmly ranking second in the world. Buried beneath this land are not just strategic rare earth elements like neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium, but also the golden key for Mongolia to achieve economic breakthroughs each gram of rare earth oxide is linked to permanent magnet motors in new energy vehicles, navigation systems and advanced fighter jets, and core components of 5G base stations. From a geopolitical perspective, Mongolia's rare earth deposits are mostly concentrated in the East Gobi and Central Gobi provinces, with giant mining areas like Oyu Talgoy and Tavan Talgoy boasting astounding proven reserves. As early as the 2010s, the Ulaanbaatar government inscribed rare earth development into its national strategy, hoping to replicate Australia's economic miracle on a mining cart. The awkward reality is that as a landlocked country without an outlet to the sea, Mongolia must transport its white gold overseas via the Trans-Siberian Railway in Russia or through China's Tianjin port in Liangyangan, leaving its export routes inherently blocked by neighboring countries. It was in this predicament that Mongolia turned its gaze to the US, thousands of miles away. In 2023, the US and Mongolia signed the Open Skies Agreement, and in 2024, they announced the establishment of a critical minerals partnership, seeking to break the transportation deadlock through a third neighbor strategy. The US has promised technical support and capital injection, even envisioning rare earth transportation via the Arctic route or air freight. However, this intercontinental resource transaction was idealistic from the start, facing geographical barriers, transportation costs, and international power games, the seemingly beautiful resource marriage is actually fraught with hidden tensions. The idea is promising, but reality is harsh. The aforementioned air freight plan for rare earths is like a fantasy. Let's do the math, a typical cargo plane has limited carrying capacity, and the amount of rare earths it can transport at one time is a drop in the bucket compared to Mongolia's huge reserves. Moreover, air transport costs are extremely high, from fuel fees and aircraft where to various handling charges, the cost of shipping one kilogram of rare earths to the US may exceed the value of the rare earths themselves. It's like spending 100 yen on shipping to deliver a 50 yen item, only a fool would do that. Mongolia isn't foolish, so why do they still cling to the fantasy of air freight? This actually reflects their anxiety to break free from geopolitical constraints. As a landlocked country with only China and Russia as neighbors, Mongolia must borrow routes through these two nations to ship rare earths to the US. But in the complex game of geopolitics, this path is far from easy. They attempt to bypass China and Russia and establish direct ties with the US via the seemingly convenient air freight, but this unrealistic idea is destined to fail. This reveals that Mongolia lacks a clear understanding of reality in rare earth exports.
Geopolitics is a crucial factor in international relations, and a country's geographical location often determines its development path and foreign cooperation models. Mongolia ignores the limitations of its geopolitical situation and blindly pursues cooperation with the U.S. This short-sighted behavior not only makes it difficult to achieve its rare earth export goals but also risks triggering a series of geopolitical crises. If it cannot properly handle relations with neighboring powers, Mongolia's position on the international stage will only grow more difficult. The U.S.'s empty promises and Mongolia's confusion The U.S., a global technological and military power, naturally has huge demand for rare earths. Upon seeing Mongolia's abundant rare earth reserves, it immediately hatched its own plans. From the Trump administration's first Rare Earth New Deal in 2019 to the U.S.-Mongolia Open Skies Agreement in 2023, the U.S.'s strategic layout has long penetrated Mongolia's mining sector. They proposed building processing and purification plants in Mongolia, which sounds like a win-win solution. Mongolia can increase product value and income by processing rare earths, while the U.S. can obtain a stable rare earth supply and break free from dependence on Chinese rare earths, note that the U.S. Department of Defense's 2024 Critical Mineral Strategy report clearly states that 83% of its rare earth imports rely on China. Behind this industrial layout lies a deeper geopolitical consideration. By controlling Mongolia's rare earth supply chain, the U.S. can both check China's dominance in the global rare earth market and incorporate Mongolia into its Indo-Pacific strategy resource map. But reality is more complex than paper agreements. Although Mongolia holds world-class rare earth deposits like Oyutalgoy, it faces the dilemma of lagging infrastructure. Transporting goods from Ulaanbaatar to the nearest deepwater port requires crossing 2,000 kilometers of land, and the existing railway network can only meet 15% of the planned export volume. The U.S. promised infrastructure assistance is more like a pie in the sky according to a 2024 audit report by the U.S. Government Accountability Office, the fund fulfillment rate for Mongolia's infrastructure over the past five years was less than 30 percent. This castle-in-the-air cooperation reveals the U.S.'s essence of packaging interest plunder with strategic visions. However, the U.S. overlooks a key issue, Mongolia lacks rare earth purification technology. Rare earth purification is a complex technical process requiring extensive expertise, advanced equipment, and experienced technicians. Currently, China leads the world in rare earth purification technology, boasting a complete and mature technical system. Mongolia, by contrast, is almost a blank slate in this regard. With its own rare earth industry still plagued by problems, how much substantive help can the U.S. really offer Mongolia? Although the U.S. is powerful in science and technology, its rare earth industry faces numerous challenges, high domestic mining costs, limited processing capacity, and an incomplete industrial chain. For years, the U.S. has tried to revive its rare earth industry but made slow progress. In this context, the advanced technology and financial support promised by the U.S. to Mongolia are likely just empty promises. Mongolia eagerly expects to obtain technology and funds from the U.S. to upgrade its rare earth industry, but it fails to realize it may have fallen into a hollow promise game. This phenomenon reflects a trust crisis in international cooperation. The U.S. dangles an alluring olive branch to Mongolia for its own interests but cannot fulfill its promises. Mongolia, without fully evaluating the U.S.'s capabilities and sincerity, easily believes these promises and falls into confusion. In international cooperation, countries should maintain a clear mind and not be bewitched by false promises. Meanwhile, technological monopoly is also a key issue in international competition. Although the U.S. recognizes the importance of rare earths, it cannot effectively develop its own rare earth resources or help Mongolia establish a rare earth processing industry due to technical bottlenecks. This reminds other countries that when developing key industries, they must focus on technological R&D and independent innovation, not excessive reliance on external technical support. Multiple hurdles to the processing plant plan to achieve high-value-added rare earth exports, building processing and purification plants is inevitable for Mongolia. But this plan faces numerous challenges, far from being achievable overnight. First is the technical hurdle, as mentioned, Mongolia lacks rare earth purification technology, 
and obtaining technical support from the US and other Western countries is difficult. Without advanced technology, even if plants are built, they cannot produce high-quality rare earth products. Second is the funding problem. Establishing a modern rare earth processing and purification plant requires huge capital investment, from purchasing equipment and constructing factories to hiring personnel and daily operations, every link demands substantial funds. Mongolia's economy is underdeveloped, making it difficult to bear such massive costs alone. Although the U.S. has expressed willingness to provide financial support, as mentioned, the U.S. itself is bogged down by rare earth industry issues, leaving uncertainty about how much money it can actually offer. Moreover, even if the U.S. provides partial funding, it may come with harsh conditions, and whether Mongolia is willing to accept them remains a question. Furthermore, building plants requires considering market demand and supply chain support. Rare earth products are mainly used in electronics, new energy, military, and other fields, so Mongolia needs to ensure stable market demand for its rare earth products. Meanwhile, rare earth processing requires support from a series of supporting industries, such as chemical raw material supply and equipment maintenance. Mongolia has a weak industrial foundation in these areas, making it extremely difficult to establish a complete supply chain system. Take Oklahoma in the U.S. as an example, with heavy investment, the state plans to become a U.S. critical minerals production hub, constructing multiple related facilities including rare earth magnet plants. However, it faces challenges such as a lack of major critical mineral deposits, a weak education system, and inconvenient inland transportation. Even with massive capital inflows, the development of related enterprises remains highly uncertain, with some production plans still in the conceptual stage and far from commercial scale production. The problems Mongolia faces in building rare earth processing plants are similar to those in Oklahoma, if not more severe. Mongolia not only has weak infrastructure but also lacks industrial support and technical talent, how can it establish a complete rare earth processing industry from such a foundation? Mongolia's plan to build rare earth processing and purification plants looks promising, but in reality, it is fraught with obstacles. Implementing this plan requires overcoming numerous challenges like technology, funding, and markets, as well as establishing a complete industrial and supply chain system. If Mongolia cannot find reliable partners to solve these practical problems, this plan may well remain a castle in the air. This also reminds other countries that when formulating industrial development plans, they must fully consider their actual situation and potential risks, not blindly follow trends. Environmental pollution costs and sustainable development considerations Rare earth refining is a highly polluting process that causes severe environmental damage. During refining, it generates large amounts of wastewater, waste gas, and waste residue. Wastewater contains heavy metals and harmful substances that, if discharged untreated, pollute soil and water sources, causing irreversible damage to the surrounding ecosystem. Waste gas contains pollutants like fluorides and sulfur dioxide, which contaminate the atmosphere and trigger environmental issues like acid rain. Waste residue contains radioactive substances that, if improperly handled, pose long-term threats to human health and the ecosystem. When considering developing its rare earth industry, Mongolia must face up to environmental pollution. Pursuing large-scale rare earth refining for short-term economic benefits without regard for environmental costs could lead to ecological degradation, affecting people's quality of life and future sustainable development. For example, some African countries, due to a lack of environmental awareness and effective supervision during early mineral development, overexploited and used extensive refining methods, resulting in severe ecological damage, land desertification, water source depletion, and people falling into difficult living conditions. Mongolia must not repeat these mistakes. Against the global backdrop of advocating sustainable development, Mongolia needs to balance economic growth and environmental protection. This requires introducing advanced environmental protection technologies and management experience, strengthening environmental supervision, and ensuring pollutant emissions from rare earth refining meet standards. Meanwhile, Mongolia can explore developing a green rare earth industry, reducing energy consumption and pollution in the refining process through technological innovation to achieve a win-win for economic development and environmental protection.
From an international perspective, countries should strengthen cooperation in environmental protection to jointly address global environmental issues. For countries like Mongolia developing rare earth industries, the international community can provide technical assistance and financial support to help establish environment-friendly rare earth industries. International organizations should also formulate relevant environmental standards and regulations to strengthen supervision of the global rare earth industry, ensuring resource development and utilization align with sustainable development requirements.